Good morning. We will just give a moment to clear the waiting room. Good morning. This is the voting hearing of the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Thursday, December 14th, 2023. Today's hearing is being recorded and will be posted to the city of Boston's website. Although the public is encouraged to attend, there will be no additional testimony accepted this morning. We'll begin with the license premise inspection hearing, which occurred on Tuesday, December 12th, 2023. Item number one uh, will be continued to the next available hearing date. Item number two, Old Colonial Corporation doing business as Bell in Hand, located at 45 to 55 Union Street, date of the incident, April 22nd, 2023, assault and battery in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, thank you, Danny. The licensee did submit two videos, which I was able to review. Very difficult to see exactly what happened off camera. There was some sort of scuffle or uh, pushing of some sort, but I couldn't see who was pushing it, whether or not it was in self-defense. Um, I did not see a punch in the head. Um, so to me, it was really hard to see exactly if there was an assault. Um, I was concerned with the amount of pushing going on around those stairs. Um, for me, I, I think there has to be a lot more care than what was shown in the video when you're guiding someone um, down the stairs. And I think um, this the video downstairs where they end up carrying him out, I mean, you know, like I kind of noted in the hearing, we had, you know, direct testimony from the alleged victim, but we had no real direct testimony from anyone else involved. Um, so for me, it was kind of a weight of the evidence situation. Um, so I was very concerned. I mean, they ended up carrying him out and there was no explanation of how it got to the point where they had to carry him out. So I was, once again, you know, I know it's a close call, but I feel like I felt like I fell on the side of a violation. It, they were pretty close to the stairs, and it did seem as if it was inches away from someone falling down backwards. Yeah, I just, I think in general, not just them, but any place that has stairs for an exit, I think they should be put up, we should put them on notice. But that's what I'm suggesting, that a great deal of care has to be taken when someone's being brought out. I mean, maybe training to the effect of like, when you're at the top of the stairs, if you can, once again, take a moment to see if there can be some de-escalation instead of just beginning to physically ha handle someone down the stairs. I'm not saying there was a push, but it, it was very aggressive kind of body movement. They could have been pushed, it could have not have been pushed. I don't, I don't know, but it just seemed like a little much for what the testimony describes. You're on mute, Commissioner. Oh, Commissioner Saxon, sorry. There we go. I've done that lately. Um, yeah, the word that you use is the word that I was actually thinking of, which is de-escalation. Um, so I, I actually don't, I didn't really, because you didn't see everything, I wasn't sure of which side that I was going to fall on, but um, it was clear that there was no de-escalation. So I don't know whether there's a plan that they need to write, a de-escalation plan, whether there's a um, a removal plan or, or some site, some kind of security plan. Um, so I do, I am very sure that they need to kind of shore up what, uh, what their policies and procedures are when it comes to de-escalation and removal of, of patrons. Um, I'm kind of a toss up with the actual, whether there's a violation there right now, to be honest. I, I appreciate, um, the comments from both of you. And I think we could wrap them all up into, um, I'm going to put forward a motion and you can let me know if you agree. Um, I'm going to make a motion for a violation. Um, my vote would be for a warning and to ask the licensee to submit a de-escalation plan that takes into consideration um, the layout of their license premise with that staircase right there. Uh, the, the staff and the patron were inches from 
the, the ledge of the staircase when um, the, the, the fighting sort of stopped or the pushing stopped. So um, that's my vote. I would go, I, yes, I agree. I agree as well. So the vote <laughs> is a for a violation with a warning. And just looking through their docket sheet, they did submit a security plan back in 2018. So you like this plan, that plan to be updated uh, with particular attention paid to de-escalation and that upstairs area by the stairs, or is this a new plan? Yeah. In this event. I haven't reviewed that plan, but I think they should they should review it. And if it doesn't include um, specific information about the exiting by the staircase, they should submit it okay. and de-escalation. Is there a history on, on why they were, why they have a security plan? Like was was it was it us who asked them for it because of some kind of so there there was back again this is back in 2018 so trying to recreate history from the docket sheet but there was an incident where there was a patron on patron assault and battery uh, patron on staff and staff on patron where the board found no violation but uh was asked to submit an updated security plan okay all right so violation warning and uh requesting an, an updated security plan with specific attention to de-escalation uh and paying attention to that upstairs area by the stairs great Item number three, Fenway Johnny's LLC doing business as Fenway Johnny's located at 96 to 98 Brookline Ave. Date of the incident, May 13th, 2023. Assault and battery employee on patron in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. And assault and battery patron on employee in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. I did review the video. I did not see a violation. I agree. I agree. Item number four will also be rescheduled to the next available hearing date. Item number five, Park 54 Restaurant Group, LLC, doing business as Park 54 Restaurant and Lounge, located at 81 Fairmount Ave in Hyde Park. Date of the incident, July 10th, 2023. Assault and battery of patron and employees in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. I did not see a violation here. Um, we did, they did submit video to the police. Is that correct? But they don't have it available for us. Is that right? I just want to note that if the police show up, these licensees should save the video as a matter of course and a matter of process. I know they fired the employee. I, I don't see a violation for the underlying assault and battery. I agree with that. I agree. And if, if if that kind of um, instruction needs to be in writing about preserving video, then I would vote for that. I do too. I think we should um, send correspondence to the licensee instructing them to preserve video. No violation, correspondence from the board reminding them of their uh, duty to preserve video when asked. Mm -hmm. Item number six, Lopera Inc. doing business as Infara 2, located at 127 to 129 Maverick Street in East Boston. Date of the incident, August 5th, 2023. Patron on patron in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Patron on employee in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. And employee on patron in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Uh, I see no violation. I saw it the same way. I agree. Item seven, Huntington Market, Inc. doing business as Huntington Liquors, located at 303 Huntington Ave, date of the incident, September 21st, 2023. Sale of alcohol to intoxicated person in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 69. So we have, um, on one hand, we have two staff people who claim that the patron did not show signs of intoxication, and we have testimony of two Boston police officers who say that the patron did show signs of intoxication. There was video, but it wasn't preserved. For whatever reason, the employee did not know how to. Um, I am persuaded by the officer's testimony that they were able to um, identify the signs of intoxication. So I do see a violation for sale of um, alcohol to an intoxicated person. Yeah, I mean, once again, it was very close. Um, I did, you know, I think that the the store was trying to minimize what was going on. Their explanation for what the officers might have observed didn't really bring that true to me. 
Um, you know, maybe this is another one where it's correspondence about preserving the video because ultimately th this is such a fine point. Um, I, I, you know, once again, it's like, how could they have not preserved this? They know that they've been cited. They're, they're going to be in front of us. Like, you know, right. that, it would have been positive, you know, it would have um, taken away. We would have been able to make the determination based on what we saw, not based upon testimony and whether she had an accent or, had yes, you know, it, it was just, it was kind of a mess. Yeah. So I, I don't know where I fall on. So, I mean, I think something probably happened. The, how fine of a point as far as what they were able to observe inside while she was making the purchase, whether she, the, the, the customer might have been able to pull together long enough to make it seem like she wasn't quite intoxicated. I, I you know, I don't know, but um, I, I'm concerned with the idea that, you know, because if they're not, for me, if they're not saving the video, they, they're not really taking the matter of that series, you know, to me. It, it, and what I want to see is that the license holders are taking these these things seriously. Yeah, I I found the um, the employee's testimony on the more on the credible side, in her absolute belief that she um, thought that the person was perfectly fine. Um, so, but then you know, it doesn't exclude the fact that there it, it could have been that as soon as she got outside that she kind of like you know, let all of her, um, you know, the ability to appear sober, she kind of like let it go as soon as she let it, uh, got out of the store. So I, I, in, in a certain sense, it really would have been the video that would have helped. So I absolutely agree with, um, sending correspondence about preserving, um, you know, if they don't have any history, especially I would just find uh, a warning for this particular incident. Danny, what is their history? There is no history for a uh, sale to an intoxicated person. Okay, so I'm gonna reconsider my uh, motion, make a motion for correspondence and docket the, this incident um, so that we have it for the history. Mm -hmm. Correspondence regarding preserving the video. I, I, I think it's appropriate. Yeah, that's fine. Correspondence from the board uh, regarding the uh, duty to preserve video and the incident will be docketed. <laughs> Item number eight of the circle bar and grill. Sorry. Doing, oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Commissioner Gardner. And, and just could we have the docket reflect um, the, like the absence of the video or, you know, video wasn't provided, that kind of thing. So we can see it. If we have another one, we'll see the video was an issue right there on the docket. Right. Yeah. yeah the video wasn't preserved. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Board notes uh, failure to preserve video that will be on the docket. Thank you. Item number eight, the Circle Bar and Grill doing business as the Circle located at 356 Chestnut Hill Ave in Brighton. Date of the incident, October 21st, 2023. Persons under 21 in possession of alcohol on premise in violation of Mass General Laws Chapter 138, Section 34A, 34C, and 64 to 64A. Uh, while they relied on legitimate identifications, the testimony from Boston Police were was that the pictures on the IDs did not resemble the patrons. Um, in one case, they said not at all. Um, so I see a violation for service for persons under 21 in possession of alcohol. Um, yeah, I, I saw a violation. I'd like to note that uh, one of the IDs was an out of state, so they're not entitled to the same statutory um, presumption of reasonableness. So, uh, I saw a violation. I agree. The vote is for a violation as to the disposition. There, I think I took a quick look at the history yesterday, and they have not had a violation since 2019. That's correct. Um, my vote would be for warning, first warning. I agree. Violation. And I do. Did they say they had video as well? Uh, they actually said they that couldn't they, find it. They they did not preserve that video. Okay, but they do have video, correct? They have cameras. Cameras. Okay. So again, I, you know, I would like correspondence. I know not every place has uh, cameras and video, but again, if Boston Police shows up and you've been written up, 
in real time. This wasn't like someone came back three days later and the video is not available. They should be preserving that video or finding a way to preserve it. I second. Yes. Violation with a warning and correspondence uh, reminding them of their obligation to preserve video. Yes. Item number nine was an informational hearing, Russian Benevolent Society doing business as Crystal Restaurant Garage Room located at 14 to 20 Linden Street in Alston. It's a hearing to consider the licensee's request to lift their indefinite suspension uh, pursuant to Mesh and Law, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Board's Rule 1.15. They are still scheduled for a um, hearing in six months. Is that right, Danny? Five months now. It's been one month since the board issued that. So no action to be taken on... Tuesday's hearing, we'll just wait for the um, non-use hearing in five months. Yep, I I mean, I was pretty clear. I didn't see anything to take action on. Yes. No action will be taken. Right. And item number 10, uh, also an informational hearing. If there are any comments, I have Pizza LLC doing business as Red Line Pizza located at 580 to 582 Dorchester Ave in South Boston. Uh, informational hearing to review their oper operational procedures related to their closing hour. Um, any comments or action, Kathleen, uh, Chairwoman Joyce? Just that we're waiting for the, the three dates that they're going to serve the rest of their um, suspension. Oh, they they should they still do need to correct their um their website. Yeah, I think that, I do think they're working on it. I do believe that they're trying to take action to um, have better security at the door and signage outside. But they do have to work on that website. Any any action to be taken at this time, or or just continue? No. Yeah. yeah. Moving on to the transactional hearing, which occurred yesterday, Wednesday, December 13th, 2023. Item number one, TD Food and Beverage, LLC, doing business as Fuel America, located at 805 <laughs> Columbus Ave, has applied for a common bachelor license. Manager Abdel Warad, hours of operation, 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree. Item number two, Biao Boston, LLC, doing business as Biao Sugar, located at 23 Hudson Street. Has applied for a common victualler license. Manager Yimin Tang, hours of operation 11 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree. Item number three, Boston Plateau Shawarma LLC, doing business as Boston Plateau Shawarma, located at 251 Bowdoin Street in Dorchester. Has applied for a common victualler license. Manager Jean-Luc de Barros, hours of operation 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree. Item number four, Bomb DS Days LLC, located at 251 Bowdoin Street in Dorchester, has applied for a lodging house license. Manager Jean Luc de Barros. I vote to approve. I agree. Item number five, Haymarket Parcel 9 Investor LLC, doing business as Canopy by Hilton Boston Downtown, located at 99 Blackstone Street, has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business to Fannie Jean Lewis. I vote to approve Ms. Lewis as manager of record. I believe she is the appropriate character and fitness to serve. I agree. Item six, LSF Copley Square LLC, doing business as Legal Seafoods, located at 100 Huntington Ave, has petitioned to change the manager to Mara Kavanaugh Daniel. I vote to approve Ms. Daniel as manager of record. I believe she is the appropriate character and fitness. I agree. <clears throat> agree. Item 7, South Boston Lithuanian Citizens Association, located at 368 to 372 West Broadway in South Boston, has petitioned to change the manager to Peter Galunas, Jr. I vote to approve Mr. Galunas, Jr. as manager of record. I agree. I agree. Item 8, the Tavern Club, Inc., located at 4 to 6 Boylston Place, has petitioned to change the manager to Anthony Fay. I vote to approve Mr. Fay as manager of record. I agree. Agreed. <clears throat> Item number nine, the Tennis and Racket Club, located at 927 to 939 Boylston Street, has petitioned to change the manager to Janice Pearson. I vote to approve Ms. Pearson as manager of record. I agree. I agree. Item 10, Bop Productions LLC, doing business as Bebop, located at 1116 Boylston Street, has petitioned to change the manager to Noreen Maloney. I vote to approve Ms. Maloney as manager of record. I agree. I agree. Item 11, Beantown Burger Company, doing business as Boston Burger Company, located at 1100 Boylston Street, 
has petitioned to change the manager to Abby Adams. I vote to approve Ms. Adams as manager of record. I agree. <coughs> Item 12, Clover Fast Food, Inc. doing business as Clover Food Lab, located at 360 Longwood Ave. Has petitioned to change the manager to Jasper Hoitzma. I vote to approve Mr. Hoitzma as manager of record. I agree. I agree. Item 13, OHM Concession Group, doing business as Corito Burrito, located at 100 Logan Airport, Terminal A in East Boston. Has petitioned to change the manager to Jesus Lorenzo Ariano Calderon. I vote to approve Mr. Calderon as manager of record. I agree. Great. Item 14, 39 Dalton License, LLC, doing business as the Sheraton, located at 39 Dalton Street, has petitioned to pledge the license to J.P. Morgan Chase Bank, N.A. I vote to approve the pledge. I agree. I agree. Item 15, ATG, Inc., doing business as Cleary's, located at 331 to 335 Columbus Ave., has petitioned for a change of officers' directors and a change of stock interest. I vote to approve the changes as requested. I agree. Item 16, 21st, Inc., doing business as 21st Amendment, located at 150 Bowdoin Street, has petitioned for a change of officers' directors and a change of stock interest. I vote to approve the requested changes. I agree. I agree. Item 17, Saber Restaurant LLC, doing business as Saber Restaurant, located at 150 Northern Ave, has petitioned to amend the hours of operations to Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2 a.m., and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. I vote to approve the amendment. I agree. I agree. Item 18, Harvard Convenience, Inc., doing business as Harvard Convenience, located at 157 Brighton Ave in Alston, has petitioned to amend the hours of operations to store hours Sunday through Wednesday, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., Thursday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 2 a.m. Alcohol sale hours are Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. I vote to approve the amended hours. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Item 19, the Black Rose, Inc., doing business as Black Rose, located at 160 State Street, has petitioned to amend the description of the license premise to on one floor of mixed-use building, main entrance exit located on State Street, bar and table seating for 67 patrons, standing for 128 patrons, has also petitioned to change the manager to Michael Glynn, has petitioned for a change of officers, directors, LLC managers, and a change of stock interest, and has petitioned to remove the condition on the license uh, that requires that they open at 11 a.m. on Sunday for the service of food only, and is seeking to serve alcoholic beverages beginning at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Thanks, Danny. I vote to approve Mr. Glenn as manager of record. I also vote to approve the amended description, the changes of officers and directors, and the removal of the condition um, on the license. I agree in all counts. I agree. You, there's also the change of stock interest and the permission to open at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Yes. Yes. I vote to approve all that. All the changes are good. Yes. Voted granted. Thank you. Item 20, GRNA GRB of Mass LLC, doing business as Gordon Ramsey Burger, located at 120 John F. Fitzgerald Surface Road, has petitioned to amend the description of the licensed business to premises consist of a full service restaurant on two levels. First floor is 4,082 square feet with three dining areas, bar, kitchen, and three storage areas and restrooms. Second level with 676 square feet of interior space, containing an internal staircase, elevator, and service station, and a year-round 1,811 square foot outdoor terrace on private property with dining, lounge, and seating for 89. Outdoor terrace hours no later than 11 p.m. Alcohol service from 11 a.m. Sundays. General hours of operation 10 p.m. Sunday to Thursday and 11 p.m. Friday and Saturday. I vote to approve the changes as requested. I agree. I agree. Item 21, 711 Center LLC, doing business as Casa Verde, located at 711 Center Street in Jamaica Plain, has petitioned to amend the description of the license premise to the license premise includes a dining room and a bar on the first floor with seating capacity of 58, plus two bathrooms and a kitchen in the rear. The basement consists of an area for food prep and storage, including alcohol, plus a staff bathroom and office. The outdoor seasonal patio is located on private property under common ownership with the lot on which the restaurant is located and will be open from April to October with a closing hour of 10 p.m. Seating capacity on the patio is 24, and entrance to the patio is accessible and is directly adjacent to the rear entrance of the restaurant. 
I vote to approve the amended description. I agree. As, yeah. I agree. This was one of our seasonal, this was just a seasonal patio that's becoming permanent. Okay. That is correct. This was a temporary COVID patio applying to a permit okay. operation. Item 22, Distraction Brewing Company, LLC, located at 2 Belgrade Ave in Roslindale, has petitioned to amend the description of the licensed business to 3,105 square foot brewery, located on the first floor of a two-story building. Tap room is approximately 1,615 square feet with 40 seats. Bar and production is approximately 300 square feet. Basement for storage and finishing of products with no customer access, restrooms in the rear, with an outdoor annual patio on public property, seating capacity of 36, closing at 11 p.m. Well, I think this is a great idea. I do think this is an application that needs more public process. Um, I My vote would be to defer it just to get the public process um, fleshed out between the different city departments, the neighbors, the civic associations. Sounds good. Yep. No, no opposition there. Or to allow for completion of the community process. Yep. Item 23, Zari Enterprises, Inc., doing business as O'Brien's Liquors, located at 1911 to 1913 Dorchester Ave., has petitioned to transfer the license to Rutfa, Inc., doing business as O'Brien's Liquors at the same location. Dashrat by Patel, manager, closing hour 11 p.m., and has also applied to pledge the license and inventory to Rockland Trust Company. So my vote is to approve the transfer. However, I would like to not, I would like to make sure we have a security and operations plan um, submitted by the new owner before we issue the license. It seemed to be that the new owner wasn't aware of the history that this board had with this location. And I think it's important that there's a meeting of the minds as far as security and operations here. Yeah, I share your uh, concerns about the location and the history, and I think that's appropriate. I as well. I agree. So the transfer is granted, uh, but the no license will be issued until the submission of a security and operations plan by the new uh, transferee. Yes. Thank you. Item 24. Juan Ray as individual doing business as Miami Restaurant located at 381 Center Street in Jamaica Plain has petitioned to transfer the license to Tejeda Brothers Investments LLC doing business as Miami Restaurant at the same location. Leandro Tejeda, manager, closing hour 11 p.m. has petitioned to change the closing hour to 2 a.m. on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. This is one that, that there's a community meeting scheduled for January 2nd. That's is that the date, Danny, that you have? With the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council. That's okay. Great. Um, I'm going to vote to defer this until January 4th so they can have the community meeting. I agree. Sounds good. Great. Deferred to the January 4th voting meeting to allow for completion of the community process. Item 25, Orinoco LLC, doing business as Orinoco Restaurant, located at 477 Shamut Ave, has petitioned to transfer the license to Eel Point Cafe LLC, doing business as the Shamut Inn at the same location, Quang Tran Manager, 11 a.m. closing hour. Has also updated the description of the premise, two in one room on ground floor with dining area and seated bar counter service, kitchen and storage in rear, seasonal sidewalk cafe, April to October, on DPW land with 18 seats, and outdoor hours of operation between 11 a.m. and 10 p.m. Sunday through Wednesday, and 11 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. Thursday through Saturday, interior closing hour 11 p.m. And also has petitioned to remove conditions from the license. These conditions include no bar, alcoholic beverages to be served only in conjunction with meals, closing hour Sunday to Wednesday 10 p.m., Thursday through Saturday 10.30 p.m., and a patio condition that alcohol is to be served only with food. Excuse me, I vote to approve the transfer and to approve Mr. Tran as manager of record. And I also vote to update the description and remove the old conditions. I agree to all. Granted, uh, item number 26, FONA LLC doing business as Sterling's located at 60 State Street, has petitioned to transfer the license and the location to S&A P12 Hospitality LLC, located at 400 and Newbury Street, closing hour 2 a.m., Abraham Menzin Manager, and has petitioned to pledge the license to P12 Property LLC. I think the applicant and his attorney did a great job explaining this transfer, but why they needed this license now, 
why they went out and secured it. While it's still under construction and they are still looking to attract a particular tenant, um, I would vote for um, to approve this transfer. I think they did establish a public need here. Typically, we wouldn't do that. Um, and I and I hear the concerns of the people in the hearing yesterday that um, they're afraid they wouldn't have to go back to the community to approve the management agreement or to approve a transfer at the same location. And I appreciate that. So my vote would come with condition to approve it my vote to approve it would come with the condition that they would have to go back and do a community process so that the neighborhood has some input on the management agreement on the licensee and, or on the future sale. I agree. Reasonable, yes. Granted with a condition that no further transfers at the same location or management agreement <laughs> without community process. Item number 27, JNK Inc. doing business as Fish Market, located at 170 Brighton Ave in Alston, has petitioned to transfer the license and the location to Z and N LLC, doing business as Hao Shi Guang, located at 48 Harvard Ave in Alston. Chung Quan Yu, manager, closing hour 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 10 p.m. Friday through Sunday, and has petitioned to change the classification of the license to wine, small beverages, and liqueurs. I vote to approve. Mr. Yu as manager of record and to approve the transfer as well as the change of classification. I agree. I agree. Item 28, Hong Kong Eatery Inc. doing business as Hong Kong Eatery located at 79 Harrison Ave. Has petitioned to transfer the license and the location to Jay's Cafe and Grill Inc. Doing business as Shun's Kitchen located at 520 Columbus Ave. Song Yang Lee, manager. Uh, closing hours, uh, excuse me, 11 to, uh, let me just find the, yep, hours of operation, 11 to 9 p.m. Sunday through Monday, 11 to 10 p.m. Friday and Saturday. Has also petitioned to change the classification of the license to wine, small beverages, and liqueurs, and has petitioned to change the DBA to Zaku. I vote to approve the transfer and to approve Mr. Lee as manager of record, as well as the requested changes. I agree. I agree. Item number 29, Mother Anna's Inc. doing business as Mother Anna's Restaurant, located at 211 Hanover Street, has petitioned to transfer the location, uh, the license and the location to KCL Boston LLC, doing business as F1 Club, located at 87 Pier 4 Boulevard. Uh, Hannah Staten, manager, closing hour 2 a.m., and the licensee has since sent in an updated application requesting the DBA of F1 Arcade. Okay. Um... I vote to approve the transfer and to approve Ms. Staten as manager of record um, and the updated DBA. I agree. I agree. Item number 30, Telegraph Hill Tavern LLC, doing business as Telegraph Hill Kitchen and Bar, located at 289 Dorchester Street in South Boston, has petitioned to transfer the license and the location to Scobies LLC, doing business as Scobies, located at 782 Adams Street in Dorchester. A John P. Leiden manager, 1 a.m. closing hour, has also petitioned to remove a condition from the license, setting a capacity restriction of no more than six people standing. And the licensee has also requested in writing uh, the ability to serve alcohol beginning on Sundays at 10 a.m., which does not require advertising. Okay, I vote to approve the transfer. Um, I also I believe they um, describe the public need for this concept in this neighborhood. I vote to approve Mr. Lydon as manager of record, although I think he is already approved by the board, and to remove the conditions. <coughs> and the 10 a.m. Sunday opening? Yes, 10 a.m. Sunday opening. I agree. I agree. Item number 31, Bangkok Bento LLC, doing business as Bangkok Bento Thai Kitchen and Sushi Bar, located at 272 Newbury Street, has applied for a common victual or seven-day wines and malt beverages license. Uh, uh, sorry, hours of operation, closing time, 10 p.m., manager, Wikanda, we would Ted. Danny, did she have any community process or a butter notification? Uh, I believe that she flyered uh, the neighborhood, but the butter notifications were not done prior to the hearing. Okay. I'm going to defer this um, until she has some sort of community meeting. 
Sounds appropriate. Yeah, that's reasonable. It's a Newberry Street location. She's looking for a restricted license or she's looking for a license from the city. Um, I think I need a little bit more information to establish public need here. And I think the community input would be important. Okay, we will work with ONS and uh, in the meantime, we'll defer this to allow for further community process. Okay. Item 32, BULC, <laughs> doing business as BU Bistro, located at 3840 Washington Street in Roslindale, has applied for a common victual or seven-day wines and malt beverages license. Manager Brian Lopez, closing time 11 p.m. I vote to approve man Mr. Lopez as manager of record. I believe he is the appropriate character of fitness to serve. Um, I would also approve this um, application for a beer and wine license here, pending the availability for for one of which they qualify for. Uh, I agree. Yes, I agree. Item number 33, Lepe Food Service, LLC, doing business as La Cuchara, located at 381 Blue Hill Ave in Dorchester, has applied for a common victual or seven-day wines and malt beverages license. Manager Antonio Lepe, closing time at 9 p.m. And when is the community meeting for this one? I don't believe it's been scheduled yet. This is one where ONS asked us to defer okay. so that they can meet with the civic associations. Okay, I vote to defer. I do as well. Yes. And item number 34, Jazz Urbane Cafe, LLC, doing business as Jazz Urbane Cafe, located at 2296 to 2306 Washington Street in Roxbury, has applied for a common victual or seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license. Uh, manager, Teron Dorsey, closing time, 2 a.m. I vote to approve Mr. Dorsey's manager of record and to approve, um, I believe they established public need for a license, so I vote to approve this license pending the availability of one for which they qualify. I agree. Thank you. Moving on to non-hearing transactions. The following are applying for a new common victual license at a previously licensed location. Item one, Tepeyac Cocina Mexicana, Inc., doing business as Tepeyac Cocina Mexicana, located at 1244 Washington Street in Roxbury. Uh, Manager Irma Sanchez, hours of operation, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. Item number two, Blue Hill Foods, Inc., doing business as Maz's Chicken, located at 838 Blue Hill Ave in Dorchester. Manager Ayub Khan, hours of operation, 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree. And number three, Maze Soba Ya Inc. doing business as Kenzo Gu Restaurant, located at 506 to 512A Park Drive. Manager, Shu Zhen Kao, hours of operation 10 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree. Item four, MJ Dorchester Food, Inc., doing business as MJ Teriyaki, located at 889 Dorchester Avenue, Dorchester. Manager, Zhuo Ming Li, hours of operation 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree. Item number five, Onko Chishin LLC, doing business as UG's Washoku Renaissance, located at 32 Cambridge Street in Charlestown. This is with <coughs> Foundation Kitchen Food Hall. Manager Keiko Iwakura, hours of operation 11 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. Item six, Waldwin Concessions LLC, doing business as Dunkin' Donuts, located at 300 Terminal Road in East Boston, uh, within Terminal C departures at Logan Airport. Uh, Manager Kevin Reynolds, hours of operation 4 a.m. to 9 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. Item seven, Waldwin Concessions LLC, doing business as Dunkin' Donuts, located at 300 Terminal Road in East Boston. This is within Terminal C arrivals. Manager Kevin Reynolds, hours of operation 4 a.m. to 9 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. Item eight, Ginger Exchange, doing business as Ginger Exchange, located at 1625 Tremont Street in Roxbury. Manager, Christine Chan, hours of operation, 11.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree. Item nine, Lusitano Pizza, LLC, doing business as Mario's Pizzeria, located at 8 Perkins Street in Jamaica Plain. Manager, Mario Belote, hours of operation, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. Item 10, Colette Bakery, LLC, doing business as Colette Bakery, located at 517 Columbus Ave in Roxbury. Manager, Natalie Bediar, hours of operation, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree. 
And item 11, JZD Pizza LLC doing business as Domino's located at 695 Truman Highway in Hyde Park. Manager James Z. Deck, hours of operation, 10.30 a.m. to 1 a.m. I vote to approve. I agree. Following have applied to make changes to their existing common victualler licenses. Item number one, Athenian Enterprises, Inc. doing business as Stashes, located at 612 Blue Hill Ave in Dorchester, has petitioned to change the manager to Artan Martiri. I vote to approve. I agree. Item two, La Colombe Torrefaction, Inc., doing business as La Colombe Torrefaction, located at 29 Northern Ave, has petitioned to change the manager to Anthony Flame. I vote to approve. I agree. And similarly, item three, La Colombe Torrefaction, Inc., doing, uh, located at 745 Atlantic Ave, has also petitioned to change the manager to Anthony Huang. I vote to approve. I do as well. Item four, Gilgray Inc., doing business as Domino's Pizza, located at 4000 Washington Street in Roslindale, has petitioned to change the officers of the licensed business to Eunice Caracas as president treasurer and to change uh, the manager to Eunice Caracas. I vote to approve. I agree. Item five, 2040 Center Inc. doing business as Dino's Pizza and Subs located at 2040 to 2044 Center Street in West Roxbury has petitioned to change the hours to Monday through Thursday, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Friday to Sunday, 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. <laughs> Item six, Blackstone Provisions, LLC, doing business as Stone Delicatessen, located at 106 Blackstone Street, has petitioned to change the closing hour to 11 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. Item number seven, East Boston Pizza, Inc., doing business as Decoupa's Pizza, located at 474 Saratoga Street in East Boston, has petitioned for a change of ownership interest to East Boston Pizza, Inc., doing business as Decoupa's Pizza, I uh, to, also to change the manager of record to Kevin Castillo. Vote to approve. I do as well. Great. Okay. Following is applied for a one day amendment to their existing license. Uh, this Who's on First, located at 21 Jersey Street, has applied for a series of one day amendments to include the portion of the privately owned alley to the rear of the establishment for the 2024 Red Sox uh, series, uh, their home games and events, beginning four hours prior to each event and ending two hours after, no later than 11 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. The board has before them a list of applications for special one day licenses, which have been administratively reviewed by staff and approved by the board. And on old and new business, we have three items for a vote. Item number one, Delta Airlines Inc. doing business as Delta Sky Club Express, located at Logan Airport Terminal E in East Boston, has requested to serve alcohol on Sundays beginning at 10 a.m. I vote to approve. I agree. Item two, J Bond LLC, doing uh, located at 25 Kingston Street, has requested to serve alcohol on Sundays beginning at 11 a.m. I vote to approve. I agree. And item number three, the board had deferred the following to allow for completion of the community process, which has since occurred. AA and AG Inc. doing business as the Corner Restaurant, located at 156 Bunker Hill Street in Charlestown, has applied for a common victualler seven-day wines and malt beverages license. Angel Acosta, manager, closing time, 12 a.m. So since we last heard this application, they went back and had another meeting with the neighbors. Um, and I, their feedback was that it went well. The neighbors wanted an earlier closing. So <laughs> taking all that into consideration, I vote to approve, um, I vote to approve this application um, and I would like to vote for an 11 p.m. closing to see how they do with this new license and they can come back if there are no issues and we could consider extending it. I agree with that. Reasonable. So the vote is to grant this pending the availability of a license for which they qualify with an 11 p.m. closing hour. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Thank you. These are all of the items before the board today uh, that will uh, adjourn this meeting. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Thank you.